as quilters, we love making new quilts, getting into some fabric and a design and a pattern and coming out with something wonderful. But sometimes it's fun to use what we have and maybe even sometimes those fabrics that aren't intended to be for quilting, at least not initially. This is that for me. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and I can't wait to show you this quilt. It's a denim blue jean quilt with a flannel backing, and it's all repurposed. Old blue jeans and flannel shirts. Watch how to cut them down, how to cut your jeans for quilting, and how to cut your flannel shirts for quilting and put it all together and add some pockets and just make a fun fun quilt so no more delays let's get started i'm anxious to show you oh be sure and look in the description there's a lot of links down there to some free rag quilt patterns and some tutorial downloads all those kinds of things so let's go i'm ready to quilt but please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you love the video so glad you're here today Here's a pile of cut up jeans and we're going to make a jean quilt. This is a uh, rag quilt, which I find to be one of the easiest ways to make a jean quilt because the seams are all open. It makes it easier to sew. And because we can also align the, the, uh, the seams in a certain manner, which I'm going to show you, that's going to save a lot of time. But what I want to give you an idea of is, is how we start. We pile up our, our old jeans that we've collected or the kids have grown out of or wherever they, they come from. A lot of these were given to me because folks know I like to use them in quilting. And so I've, I've discovered a way or I have, I have developed a way that works really good for me. The first thing is a rectangle. I'd rather use a rectangle with denim than a square because I get twice as much coverage and less seams. I don't have to have a seam in the middle. Lighter weight fabric, I still use the squares because the rectangle can be too long for regular fabric. Because denim is so sturdy and strong, it holds up really well in the larger blocks. So by using a rectangle, then I... I have a large block that I can work with, and this is great to cut out of a pair of jeans. This is from the leg, and that's where you're going to get the bulk of your fabric. I have created a tutorial on how to cut denim from blue jeans, and I'm going to put a link here for you so that you can watch that. If you need a little instruction, some ideas, some tips on how to get the most out of your blue jeans when you're cutting them for quilting, this will help you out with that. So that tutorial can be very helpful. So once your jeans are cut, then we need to start putting it together. And the first question is, are you going to use a backing or not? And in this particular quilt, I am. I have made a uh, denim rag quilt before without a backing. And I'll put that link down below so you can look at that quilt as well. It's very, very similar in the way it's made. It just doesn't have a backing. Because these jeans are, are used, they've been worn, they've been washed, the denim is nice and soft. So making a denim quilt, a blue jean quilt out of used jeans, even without a backing, it, it can be soft and comfy and very enjoyable to use. So once your blue jeans are cut up and ready for quilting, we need to consider the backing. And in this case, I'm using flannel. And I use flannel shirts. So I cut them in the same size rectangles and I connected them in the seam in order to create the rag quilt. Remember, rag quilt seams are on the front. They're on the top. That way, when we wash them, we get a really nice frayed edge. It's soft, it's fluffy, it's comfy, and it just makes the quilt a lot more I don't know, inviting, and, and it's it's just a fun look, and it's a nice comfy quilt to have on your couch, to snuggle up in, etc. But what we need to think about is how do you get the flannel? Now you can go and buy yards of flannel, or like the jeans, you can use old clothing. And this is all from old flannel shirts. And I get about nine rectangles from each flannel shirt which is quite a bit of fabric. And again, I have a tutorial for that specifically on how to cut flannel shirts for quilting. 
so what I do, um, and I'll, I'll put that link up above if you want to get more details. So rather than make this video really long, um, I kind of did some little tutorials on the side. So if it's something you need to learn or, or, or find out more about, then you certainly can do that. But what I've done is I put all my rectangles together. So I pair up a, a, a piece of denim and a piece of flannel. And then that's going to become my block. But I do want to show you one thing. You notice here, there's a bit of a stain, but there's also a worn edge. What I do is a lot of times, in order to get the most out of my jeans, I'll repair a small problem like this that I can work around. On the edge, this is actually going to be caught up into the seam and the clipping will fray a lot of this. So this is going to disappear. But what I do want to show you is I added, I don't know, can you see that here? Can you see that seam? I added an extra piece right there in order to reinforce that spot. So it's about an inch to inch and a half strip. So I can go ahead and sew over this, clip it, and that extra strip is going to reinforce that area. Now, alternatively, I could have cut that off and just add a strip, you know, take something narrow like this and put it right across there. But this I felt was usable and I can work with that. Um, another thing to think about is how you want to decorate or adorn your quilt. Sometimes if you have a dirty area or a stained area that it just won't come clean, you can add an extra piece there. And one of the favorite things to do is to put in a pocket and oh I thought that was a pocket I don't have one right here but of course you know I have a tutorial for that and there's a tutorial on how to use pockets in your denim quilt and your rag quilts as well as how to uh, uh, to sew them in and attach them so the first thing I do is decide what my blocks are going to be pair them up with the flannel fabric with all my pairs, flannel and denim stacked aside, I'll just start from the top. And what I do, here we can see this, I run a seam right down the center. And I leave the outer edges loose. But what this does is hold that fabric in place. Because this is such a long block, this fabric can get a little loose. And over multiple washings, you can get... I don't know, it can stretch, you can get wrinkles, it can do all sorts of funny things. But by reinforcing this center, that's going to hold everything in place. And that is worth the step. Um, you may have seen in other rag quilts where they do the squares, they'll do the X. Well, this is the same kind of thing, but we don't need an X because these side seams are going to be caught up um, when we attach our rows together. We just need this centerpiece to hold it together. So once all these pieces, I just chain stitch them all the way through and they're not attached yet. They're just loose blocks and I just run them all the way through. And then once that's done, then I start putting my seams together and I use a half inch seam. So what you'll want to do is put your denim to the top because that's where we want the frayed edge and the backing, which in this case is the flannel and put that to the bottom. And this is going to create that frayed edge on the top throughout the entire quilt. So as I go through and I sew these together, I will go ahead and do multiple rows. I do not chain stitch the entire quilt at one time. Denim is heavy and flannel is heavy, and the two together can be quite an ordeal to uh, to manage at your sewing machine. So what I do is I'll generally sew it together in strips of three. So here's two strips I've already put together and then I would take this next one and add it to the top. But the other thing I want to show you here is notice that these seams are not lined up perfectly. We don't line up seam to seam. Instead I offset them to the center. Two things. It's easier because you don't have this bulky seam where these all come together in one spot 
and you're likely to break your needle. And secondly, is that by spacing these seams out, you don't get that cluster of loose thread that tends to knot up. So this keeps your quilt top a lot cleaner without that knotty kind of spider nest looking business where, where all the seams come together. So I prefer doing the offset. Now a couple things about sewing, talking about how this can be heavy. When you do a rag quilt, you always want to use at least a size 14 needle. When you're doing a denim quilt, you want to go 16. You need that extra large needle in order to handle this fabric. You're going through a lot of layers, generally four, sometimes six, and that's a lot to go through. And you want a strong needle that can handle that. The other thing you want is a walking foot. Whether you're doing this center line or you're doing this part here, this actual seam, the walking foot is going to help draw your fabric on top. So you've got your feed dogs underneath that's pulling the fabric as you go. But because you have so much fabric, it's easy for this top fabric to just sort of slip and slide. But when you use the walking foot, it has the, the uh, feed dogs on the top as well as on the bottom. So it's feeding the fabric evenly. The best benefit for me, other than ease of quilting, is that the seams line up at the beginning and end. How many times, particularly on a rag quilt, do you start here, you sew all the way to the other side, and you've got an inch or two that isn't lining up? Now, granted, you can pin it and you can make it all work, but you have to fuss with it because it doesn't want to line up because this top fabric is not being pulled through at the same rate as the lower fabric on the bottom. So a walking foot is really good. And I'm telling you, just the right tools for something like this makes all the difference. Otherwise, it can become frustrating. So we have our blocks and we put them together. Now, at this point, this is where I would decide where I'm going to put my pockets. And for this quilt, let's see. Most of the pockets I put on the flannel side. And... In order to offset the seam, what we do, I'm going to put it this way, is every other row gets a half block. And then this one will come here. So here's our offset seam. And then what I do here is I've just, I added this pocket. Now you can add denim pockets. These shirts, there were a lot of um, extra pockets and I just thought that was fun. They can button down. They're workable. You can put your hands in and because of the way this was cut, the bottom is open. But when I sew this together, then that's going to be caught up in the seam and it'll be closed. So those are just some things to think about and I have another one over here I'll show you because I do have a denim pocket. But I just wanted to go through this initial sewing and setup so you can see how to put this all together. And this is just a really easy way to do it. By offsetting your seams, by working with larger blocks, that's going to save you a lot of time. So now let's go ahead and look at a piece that has been put together. So I put all three rows together. And this quilt has three sections of three rows. And it's going to be roughly 70 by 80, I think, is the finished size of this. All the dimensions in that information are in the uh, three tutorials. The block cutting, the shirt cutting, and the pockets. And um, once we get to this point, we're ready to take it on and put the whole thing together. So let me show you how that works. And here's my set of three strips all sewn together. And you can see they have their, their center stitching that's going to hold everything in place. Offset seams. I've already clipped this one. I'm going to show you um, some tips on, tri on uh, clipping as well. But I also want to encourage you to try a border in your rag quilt. These are really wonderful. I like the look. It changes it up. I think it helps to... What do I want to say? 
break up the repetition because a whole bunch of denim and blocks looks okay that's fine but if you can change it up with colors in the denim and then add a different a different size and maybe you alternate row sizes just something to create some interest and so what i do is i make a border and i have a piece that's left over here so what i do is um i think this was i, I cut it four inches let me just check sometimes i'll go three but on this one because it's a large quilt i went with four inches so i get my pieces I measure across and I sew my strips together to get the length that I need and I'll put the seam to the inside on the borders so where I join the fabrics together that seam is not going to be frayed and on the outside I keep that on the inside like we normally would on any quilt so the first thing I do is I put these two strips together actually we can see it here I put these two strips together and I sew this center seam right down here and that's going to hold everything in place and what makes it nice is when I'm I'm attaching this I have this pre-sewn and it's going to go a whole lot quicker because as I'm sewing these seams on the the denim portion of the blocks need to be sewn open these are very thick seams with denim and flannel and if you sew them closed it's really going to be difficult to work with so i sew them open and so when i have an open seam like this and i have my uh my border right here it just helps to not have to worry about those seams on the bottom so this is sewn with one seam down the middle and and i don't measure it i just eyeball it and i sort of hold it and get my uh, presser foot going down the center if it's off a little here or there it's it's not significant it's not visible use a neutral thread i used gray and that worked pretty good and uh, then i'll come back and i'll do a half inch seam on each side the reason i do that oh, that one got a little narrow i don't think i did my seam quite as wide as I needed to on this um, yeah see these look better the reason I sew both edges is I mentioned about sewing this open if I have a border underneath that those two pieces are already attached it's like having a single piece of fabric rather than having two layers and I can put this under here sew from the top make sure this seam is open and not worry that anything underneath is flipping and that's important to me because like i said this is a lot of fabric to hang on to and as you're pushing it and pulling it and tugging it and trying to you know manipulate everything to get this under the feed dogs if you're also trying to line this up that can be a challenge so i'd like doing the borders this way and I'll also do one, so this you can see is through the middle of the quilt. I'm also going to do one around the outer edge. So let me show you. So this is the top edge right there. And we have our three rows. Then we have a border. And then we have another three rows. Now, it's also fun to do a border with flannel to the front with the denim which is kind of a nice look and have the flannel on the back with a denim border so you can kind of switch things up get a little creative decide what you want to do how it works best for you but there's a lot of versatility in doing a rag quilt i love that we're repurposing old clothes whether it be as a memory quilt for somebody in the family using maybe um, clothes that children grew up with and giving them a quilt in the, in high school for graduation for college um, whether it's a, a new quilt for a baby and and uh, you want to put something sweet together with certain mementos or pictures or things like that it's a lot of fun to make a quilt like this that allows so much flexibility and it goes together very quickly now the other big thing that is really important to know is the clipping what i want to show you is how to 
cut these once they're sewn. So you know in advance we're going to have these pre-cut and so we're going to be sewing this to the back and now we have to come back and, and cut this piece right in here. See that where the seam crosses? What I do, the best way to clip these to get the best fraying and not get a lot of knotting is to just get right up in there close to that uh, that stitching line where the seam is joining the two pieces. So now this is going to um, move freely and it's going to then also fray nicely. Now when you're doing this seam, remember when you're clipping along a seam you always want to clip in a line with the seam, or I should say it's perpendicular, but you want to go clipping um, along the line of the seam. And so now we're going to go this way. We're going to clip along the line of the seam. Where we have this seam and this comes together where these pieces are folded over, we want to make sure that gets clipped well in order to have it fray. So you want to just snip right up in on either side of that seam. So now we have this little bit, and you're also catching the back while you're doing it. And then you're just going to continue. If this is, you know, a particularly wide seam allowance for whatever reason, I would probably um, cut it back a bit. But all you do is just add these little quarter inch clips about every half inch. And we do that side. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to do this. Losing my grip here. There we go. And just trim our way or uh, clip our way all the way through. And that's the extent of clipping. So you can see on, let me move things out of the way, on this one that's pre assembled, the clipping is done, everything is good to go, but I don't clip this outside edge. We don't clip that exterior edge until everything is finished and we trim it up like this one was a little bit long. So I'm going to need to clip that, um, trim it first before I clip it. And then once all this clipping is finished, then we get the final, the final task of washing the quilt and running it through the dryer. Now I do want to give you a couple tips on that as well. When you wash it, I always put, I do a second rinse. I'll, I'll do a, a quick short rinse just to get a lot of the loose stuff out or a quick wash, whatever your machine sets at. I'll put a little soap in there just to make sure everything is nice and clean. And then I will do a second rinse just to clean out a lot of the extra pieces that may be floating around. It's the agitation in the washing machine that's going to help remove a lot of these threads. So once this is, is cut, see there's just these little sections, then these cross threads are going to come out. Now, one thing that's also important is if you don't cut these straight in line, if you make diagonals, they're not going to fray as well because the thread is not going to come out loosely. You want to have this. So let's see, find a piece here. See how this ravels? When we pull a thread, it comes out, and it comes out because this is straight in line with that fabric. Now, if you were to come in and cut this, see what happens? Look at it, it's not fraying. It's not fraying because that diagonal cut won't allow those threads to come out loosely. Now, you can start here, and you can fray one at a time. But that's because these are straight. You don't get fraying on a diagonal. So you want to make sure when you cut that you cut on the straight of the fabric. And then when you're clipping, these little pieces are all just going to fall out very easily. So that's a little, little physics lesson in uh, fabric and weaving and washing and fraying and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it may be more information than we need, but understanding it just helps to make it easier to, to, to achieve and to get what you want in the final product. So I've washed it and I take it outside and I shake it because there's still going to be stuff, you know, um, 
around, especially if it's a bigger quilt, there's not a lot of room for a lot of the extra pieces to completely um, rinse out. So I'll shake it, and then if there's any knots or any long pieces, I'll cut it off. But I'll tell you, if you do the clipping well, you're probably not going to have much, um, much of a problem with that at all. And then you put it in the dryer. Now the dryer, more agitation, it's going to help loosen some of these threads as well. And the important thing to know is your dryer is going to... Um, get a lot going in the, those first few minutes. So I'll put this in for maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then I'll open my dryer and clean out the lint trap. You don't want that lint trap to get too full. That can be dangerous under any circumstance. It's always good to keep it, you know, keep it cleaned out. But particularly when you're doing this, because it'll, it could, it could get over, overheated because the heat isn't going to be able to filter through with so much string in there. So take your your lint trap out after about 15-20 minutes and then run this through and then you're going to be good. Everything's going to be fine. Um, the only thing I haven't shown you and I need to do that real quick is how to cut the border. Now when we do the borders we're just going to cut along the half inch like we ordinarily would. But what I do, let's see, I need a place where you can see better. What I do is I'll have a seam going this way and a seam going this way, right? Where the borders come together. You don't want to kind of cut straight into this, this diagonal or this corner because we get that diagonal and it gets messy. So the first thing I do, let's see, are these going to snip off that corner for me? There we go. Is I'll take and just snip off the very tip of that corner and then I'm going to come in this way and come in this way. So now I have that loose little corner piece. Can you see that? I have that loose little corner piece that's going to allow it to fray and then I just keep snipping on each side. I go all the way through. So that's really um, a great way to do it. Let's see, I can do it one more time. Well, let's say this is this is my edge. So I have a corner here. I'm going to trim off I right there. So we've got that little notch. It's like a, the dog ear, the little corner there. And I'm going to come in at a little bit of an angle and a little bit of an angle. But I want to keep this attached. I don't want to cut it in so deep that I'm cutting that piece out because I want that to fray. And then from here, then you just go straight down each side. So I have found that this works really, really well in the corners because the corners, it's just like with the seams. When you have a lot of this coming together and those strings start to fray and there's a lot of bulk there, it's going to knot up. It's just not going to look attractive. It looks messy. So this, I think, gives everything a better overall look. And I love the quilt. These are awesome. You, you've got your denim on the front, which is a lot of Fun. You've got fun flannel on the back, and you've got some pockets. You can do all kinds of things, and this is a great way to personalize a gift for somebody. So I hope you have a chance to uh, to make your own, and I'll I'll get a uh, picture of it, the whole thing finished, that you can look at at the end. So this is my project. This is what I've been busy doing, and chances are you can get a rag quilt done in the next couple days. They go quickly. It takes a little bit of time. It actually takes more time getting it all pulled together, getting the old jeans, getting the shirts. But you can also go to the fabric store and get some good deals on uh, buying denim and flannel by the yard. That's another option that'll make it a little easier. You won't get the pockets. You can make your own, but you know, you decide. It's a matter of what you'd like to do. So there you have it. One rag quilt ready to go some quick ideas on how to make it simple and fast. And I'm really excited that you're here joining me today. Thanks so much. It's been my pleasure. Please, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.